the Five Nights at Freddy's movie is nearly upon us. And if the games are anything to go by, then I for one am looking forward to a kind of simple but very fun horror movie that you leave the theater enjoying, and then when you're thinking back on it like two hours later, you're like, wait, what was even the plot though? Now, I'll admit, I'm not the biggest horror movie guy. I mean, I just don't like being scared. Spooky jump scares in the movie are one thing, but then like later that night when you're trying to sleep and you can't help thinking about what would happen if a robot bear kicked your door down to choke slam you up. I don't need that kind of stress in my life, okay? But look, I may be a coward, I'll admit it, but I have my pride. What, you think I'm just gonna sit back and let this dumb chicken keep me up at night? No, because in truth, I'm not actually afraid of animatronics. I'm not actually afraid of abandoned pizzerias. And I sure as hell am not afraid of any ghosts. No, in reality, we only fear that which we do not understand. And today, I am going to understand these animatronics. I am going to understand how they work, how they tick, how they break. I want to be lying awake, not out of fear, but with bated breath. Man, I wish an animatronic would come here and see what happens. Come on, Bonnie, where you at? Wait, let's go. At the end of the day, behind all the ghosts, electrical problems, and supernatural BS, animatronics are just mechanisms. And I'm a mechanical engineer. This is a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to survive five nights at Freddy's. Richard, uh, hit that intro. First, for those who aren't familiar, let's break down the situation. You are a nighttime security guard working at the defunct Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Your job is to sit in the back room and make sure nobody breaks in to steal whatever an abandoned pizza place had that's worth stealing. Look, odds are if someone comes in, they're probably just a vlogger or something. It's a super easy gig, except I feel like I'm forgetting one small thing. Uh, oh yeah, right. Uh, there's four old animatronics that are possessed by the spirits of kids who got serial killed by one of the owners of the establishment several years ago, and they're all trying to kill you for some reason. Oh, oh and also, uh, the guy who killed them, he may or may not be your dad, and you may or may not be like a zombie or something. It's, uh, I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. Now, obviously, we know that it is possible to survive Five Nights at Freddy's because that's literally the point of the game. Use the cameras to keep tabs on the animatronics, flicker the lights to see what's in the halls, close the door when they get too close, and hope you don't run out of power before six o'clock. That strategy works, but it's pretty risky. All it takes is one little mistake and you're a sitting duck for the rest of the night. No, if you want a real shot at surviving this situation, then your best bet is to get out of there as quickly as possible. Priority number one, escape. The FNAF movie is not out yet at the time that this video goes up, so it's hard to get an exact sense of that building layout to formulate an escape plan, but if we go by the original game, then we have an exact map. You start off back here in the security office, and you need to get to the door over, which it's just over, it's just, where's the door? I mean, this place definitely has a door. You had to get in somehow, and you're able to leave at the end of every night, but we don't see it on any of the security cameras. Heck, we don't even see any windows. Seems like a, just a little bit of an oversight when your whole job is to make sure that people don't sneak in. Would have been kind of nice to have a camera that shows you where they're trying to sneak in, but hey, you gotta know what's going on in, in the storage closet, I guess. We know that the front door doesn't appear on any of the cameras, so it has to be in a place that the cameras don't see. That narrows it down to either side of the stage, the kitchen, or the hallway with the bathrooms positioned directly under the camera. I think the latter is the most likely. There's not a ton of room on either side of the stage for a main entrance, and it'd be weird to have a front door 
in the kitchen, though I suppose there could be a back door there. But no matter where the door is, you're gonna have to eventually venture out into the main dining area. And you're probably gonna have to tango with some animatronics along the way. Just a little bit of, you know, a little tango. Hey, real quick for anyone who missed my recent announcement, I have a Patreon now! If you're a fan of the channel and want to get access to all sorts of perks like exclusive live streams, suggesting and voting on video topics, and seeing videos like this before anyone else, then check the link in the description to learn more. If you want to support the channel but can't afford the Patreon, no worries, I totally get it. You can always click the subscribe button below this video to subscribe here on YouTube. It's free and it helps out a ton. Wow! Oh, I think that was the calmest call to action I've ever done. Man, that was that was pretty good. I should do this more. Oh. According to Sun Tzu, if you know your enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So, let's get to know ourselves a little, shall we? This insatiable quest for knowledge and the constant need to prove yourself. What's that about? Oh, oh, he meant in terms of like, like physical assets, know like your, know you, what you have, got it. The security office in FNAF 1 has all sorts of junk lying around that you could probably use in an escape plan. A fan, this cupcake, and I'll say it, too many monitors. Like hell, I can only look at one camera feed at once. There's like six or seven, this is excessive. As a security guard, you probably also have something on you to defend yourself, like one of those police batons, maybe even a firearm. Also, these games take place in the 90s, but this is 2023, which means you almost certainly have a smartphone on you. Suffice to say, you've got a lot of tools at your disposal. Now, to know our enemy. We never get an exact explanation of how the animatronics work. Are they ghosts puppeting around the animatronics like poltergeist? Uh, do they need electricity? Do they see with proximity sensors, thermal detectors, ghost vision? Crucially, you don't know. We have no idea what these animatronics are capable of or what sort of limitations they have. By Sun Tzu's logic, that would mean that for every victory, we will also suffer a defeat. So, if we want to beat these animatronics, then we must be prepared to sacrifice something. But Sun Tzu was old, and he probably didn't know about science, so I don't give a damn what he says. We're getting out of here unscathed. Let's start with what little we do know. Real-world animatronics of the age were super rudimentary. As we found out in this video, if the animatronics work like real-world bipedal robots from the 90s, they'll be incredibly slow, can only walk in a straight line, and they're super unbalanced. One swift boot to the chest, and they're down for the count. But unfortunately, these aren't regular animatronics. They're haunted animatronics. It's pretty clear that they don't have any sort of trouble staying upright and they move around pretty freely, so getting past them won't be so easy. We have no idea how mobile the animatronics are exactly. I have a feeling that you'd probably be able to outmaneuver them, like, I don't know, I have trouble picturing bulky Chica juking you out or something, but the main problem is Foxy. This guy can move. In a previous video, we learned that Foxy can keep pace with Usain Bolt, so you are almost certainly not outrunning him. We also know from Help Wanted that Foxy will always run down the West Hall to attack you if you try to leave the office, so you're gonna have to deal with him one way or another. Worst comes to worst, you're gonna have to stand your ground and fight. And now I hear you fighting a giant metal fox possessed by a ghost sounds like a terrible idea, but it's actually not as crazy as you think. We know for a fact that these ghosts are at least somewhat dependent on their animatronic body to be able to move. Golden Freddy doesn't have an endoskeleton, it's just a haunted suit, so it cannot move around like the others. It sort of seems like the ghost inside the animatronic is the brain, but it still needs a physical body to be able to do stuff. 
This is good because it means that animatronics are susceptible to physical damage. If we break their endoskeleton, we can limit their ability to move, which means we stand a fighting chance. Granted, Golden Freddy can literally teleport, which is a bit of a problem, but at the end of the day, He's basically just a bunch of floating plastic. I'm not too worried. Let's mess up some robot chickens. An animatronic's main method of attack is with its bite, which we know from the cutscenes in FNAF 4 is strong enough to break bones for some reason. To combat this, grab something bulky, a box, your crumpled up jacket, basically anything that's not your face, and shove it deep into its jaw. That'll buy you a little time to start doing some damage. If we take a look at the endoskeleton for all the FNAF 1 animatronics, we see that their elbows and knees are made from ball joints, more commonly known as ball and sockets. Why they chose this is Beyond me, it seems like it would restrict the movement in the joints in the direction that matters and it'd be super difficult to reliably actuate, but it's a good thing they did. Ball joints offer extra flexibility and are good at handling compressive loads along their axis, but they're very bad when it comes to lateral loads. In layman's terms, if you want to stop an animatronic, you just gotta bust some kneecaps. Just grab anything heavy like a pipe, the fan, a monitor, lord knows you have enough of them, and swing for the fences. Foxy, Bonnie, and Chica all have plastic coverings around their knees, so it might take a couple of shots to do sufficient damage, but luckily, Foxy's legs are fully exposed and unprotected. If you can damage the joint enough to deform or fully break it, then you've effectively put that leg out of commission, severely limiting the animatronic's mobility and allowing you to get away. If you happen to have a firearm on you, congratulations, you win. Just take a few well-placed shots at the knee from a distance and that thing's down for the count. So with all that in mind, I formulated the perfect escape plan. If you ever find yourself in this highly specific fantasy situation, just follow this guide and you'll be out of there so fast you'll wonder why anyone thought this game was scary. Heck, you might even leave the animatronics quaking in their boots. Step one, don't use the hallway lights. Use your phone as a flashlight to save on the building's power. Then you're going to want to look for something heavy and preferably long to use as a weapon so you don't have to get too close to the animatronics and you can get some nice leverage on your swings. Then you need to find something bulky to jam in their mouths as a shield. A crumpled up jacket or this fan are both good choices. Heck, you could probably take both. The first problem you're going to have to deal with is Foxy, who will run you down the moment you try to leave, but you can use this predictability to your advantage. Before leaving the office, set up a bunch of boxes and junk to create a low barrier in front of the west door. Use the cameras to make sure the east hall is clear, and make sure Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica aren't blocking your escape route. Then, take a deep breath. Because it's go time. Bait Foxy down the west hall and into the office. Hopefully he'll trip on your barrier, but if not, you'll have to act fast. If you have time, try to close the west door behind Foxy. Poke it with something long or throw something at it. Whatever you can do to get it closed without getting too close to Foxy. Then back out the east door, reach around, and close it. If all goes well, you'll now have Foxy trapped inside the security office and your biggest threat is out of the picture until the power goes out and by that time you'll be long gone. If you weren't able to get the west door closed you'll need to get out of that hallway fast so you don't get cornered. From here it's a mad dash to the door. Get out into the main dining area so you have more room to maneuver. The goal is to avoid any animatronics at all costs, but if you do run into one and need to stay on your ground, shove something in its mouth, bash out those kneecaps, and get out of there. Show them no fear and no respect. You know what? If the first attack goes well, you can lure a few more through this doorway, take them out like you're a Spartan at the hot gates, show those kids they mess with the wrong guy. Literally, you got the wrong guy, dummy. Sorry you got murdered, kid, but I'm not going down like that. And if you ever run into Golden Freddy, man, just keep walking. That guy ain't no problem. God, man, I f***ing hate ghosts. They're so dumb. They're so... I f***ing...
Once you get out, get in your car, flip those robots the bird, and drive far, far away. And here's the important part. Don't come back for a second night. You literally almost got murdered at your minimum wage job. If you really need the money that bad, grab the tapes where the previous security guard explains in great detail how dangerous these animatronics are and then proceeds to get murdered by one, sue Fazbear Entertainment, and worst case scenario, they'll pay you a whole bunch of money to brush the case under the rug, then go get a job at, I don't know, like McDonald's or something. I promise the Hamburglar ain't gonna try to kill you it's not that hard. This video was brought to you all by my amazing patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Ferlano, and Sherry and Mark. If I made a list of statistically coolest people, you would be the top three, or, or four, I guess.